as you mentioned uh, earlier, he had said no single individual in his uh, uh, tenure as a premier, I mean, as a prime minister, would be arrested without uh, 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 what you call it uh, uh, reasonable suspicion. Yeah. yeah. So, how can you describe the reality on the ground uh, when you compare uh, with this vote made by him two and plus years? Yeah. Yeah, in fact, it's very difficult, uh, especially those cases before the court of law, it's very difficult to make uh, judgments because you need to have uh, the concrete data. But politically, uh, and of course, apparently, we can say, apparently there are a lot of things that we can say. Uh, for the last two years, Ethiopia uh, has been uh, in breaking news. Day after day, there is a breaking news about something breaking news about assassination, breaking news about the adoption of a certain law that clearly violates the constitution, a breaking news about the Ethiopian Renaissance dam, a breaking news about the Ethiopian war. So many breaking news uh, in Ethiopia. So uh, most of them very uh, annoying and of course frustrating. Uh, so for the last years, we have been in a, in a bad situation and we are in a bad situation as well uh, currently. Uh, and entirely, the trend implicates that we are marching towards uh, an authoritarian regime uh, mm. where Prime Minister, as he himself says, he wants to be a king. Yeah? His mother was uh, just, there is a, what you call it, a prophecy, prophecy of yeah. uh, his, his, his mother to be, he, he would be a king. Uh -huh. Seventh king of Ethiopia, I think. I, uh, I don't think he will make it, but uh, I'm certainly sure that he will at least act like a king, dictating everything, uh, setting aside the constitution and the institutions, um, but dictating uh, what he wants. Uh, the, 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 so the entire result of all the trends of, for the last two years is just establishing uh, a one-man show in the Ethiopian yeah. politics. Yeah. Uh, that's what's... Uh, uh, that's how you can uh, mention uh, the trend of the last two in the past years. Yes. Yeah, there are so many things we cannot mention. Every, uh, everything is very difficult because there are so many. We have been saying it. Uh, even in Tigray, especially Tigray, the people of Tigray have been uh, conducting the demonstrations uh, Demanding rule of law need to be uh, ensured. Uh, the constitution need to be maintained, uh, and of course, challenging uh, unconstitutional laws. Uh, a lot of things. So they are not new for the international community as well, let alone for Ethiopians. So what is important is what is now, and what is now is fr frustrating. And of course, everything is, I think, ready. Uh, it seems as if the Ethiopian state and the political situation, because the, the, you cannot talk, there is no any room to talk about the constitutionality, legality, something like that. Uh, even the political space, a uh, space for possible political dialogue is al already closed. Even the, you know, arbitration, uh, kind of mediation by uh, religious uh, leaders, something like that, is closed. So what's coming up? We are waiting for the show up. Mm -hmm. But don't forget, uh, you are telling me all what you are saying now as a legal expert, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. of course, they are, these are more, 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 more political, but the acts by themselves are political. So me as a constitutional lawyer, I'm highly related with the constitutional law. It cannot be just purely legal because it has also a uh, big political element. Mm -hmm. That's why when the constitution is violated, it becomes high political agenda. Mm -hmm. So taking these things, it's not based on legal facts or something, but it's based on the social political situations and of course the economic circumstances that we have been through in the last two years that are making such kind of opinions. Uh, I would be very happy if you could say something with regard to the media which we are closed uh, directly uh, mm. by the Prime Minister of Ethiopia, Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed. This is what people, uh, especially in Tigray, uh, say anyways. Uh, it's not me. 
So, you have something that you'd like to say or to give as a comment, as an individual or as a legal expert? To what extent that action taken by the Prime Minister himself was legal? That's the point. When we talk about legality, by the way, one thing that is not uh, does not well discussed in the Ethiopian politics, uh, even in the media, is whose power is it anyways uh, to just establish a broadcasting authority of dictating what the media should be? We have to look into the constitution. Uh, if you look at the constitution, there is a division of power between federal and state governments, so and you cannot find any any article or provision in the constitution which says that the power to regulate the medias and establish a broadcasting authority is the power of the federal government. And no, you cannot find this. What? Yeah, there is no any provision. Uh, first, we have to look into the, the design of the division of power, the form of the division of power. Uh, the federal constitution, the, the Ethiopian constitution, uh, under Article 52, sub 1 states that powers which are not exclusively stated at federal powers or exclusive state powers or concurrent powers shall be residual powers of the states it says so if a, a given power is not stated as exclusive state power or exclusive federal power or concurrent to both it will be what a reserved or residual power of the states so, the issue of media regulation and broadcasting not stated. is not stated in the constitution. So, if you look... Are you sure? Yeah. Mm. So, what we can infer from this is the states may have their own broadcasting authority to regulate their own state medias. Mm. So, the border is the constitution. So, so far as the states doesn't violate the constitution, there is no any room that the federal government appears to regulate state media and, of course, decide uh, their closure, like mm. what uh, the, 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 the government did. But we, we, practically, <laughs> you know, there is a game that that's the prosperity party is playing. Mm. It's only the broadcasting authority only wrote warning, yeah? That's the information that we have. It's only a warning letter that is that is written from the Ethiopian Broadcasting Authority to Tigray TV and uh, Dimsoya yeah. TV. Yeah. There is no official statement or letter from the Broadcasting Authority that authorizes the closure of these two medias. There is no letter. So, like a terrorist, the government makes a certain procedures that we don't know, and we found Tigran media's clothes. That's, that's, what, that's what we have. Mm -hmm. So, to argue legally, uh, we, we need to have a legal decision that's made by the government, but so far there is no legal decision that's um, made by the Ethiopian Broadcasting Authority or by any government organ uh, in Ethiopia, but apparently this is totally unconstitutional and politically immature because it's, it's, it's I don't know whether it's naivety or immaturity. The cost of closing special state media, the media of one of the constituting unit of the federation, that is Tigray, without making all the proper procedures means a lot. Mm. I don't know whether it means that Tigray is not part of the Ethiopian Federation. Of course, we know that it's been more than a year that the Ethiopian Federation is without, without Tigray. There is no uh, uh, cabinet, cabinet member from Tigray uh, representing the, the party that that, that, that wins in Tigray, that's the belief, there is no, so we have a federal government without Tigray. That's one big thing. So closure of the media means, I think it's a big disrespect for the Tigrayan people 
and for the Tigray government as well. And of course, its implication is highly costly. It's not something that you can just, you can take it as a mistake, uh, a mere mistake. Uh, so it's totally illegal, but not only illegal, but politically what? It's immature and fail, failure. It's a political failure. Uh, and uh, the Tigrayan people, and of course, and the Tigray government need to learn from such act of the incumbent. It may imply that there is no any room that, 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 that prevents the federal government from do, doing something very, very difficult for the Tigrayan government and Tigrayan people. So the government so, so, as well as the people need to be ready for uh, every eventualities. We don't know. Something bad, worst even, may come. Are you not only saying that uh, Tigray is being pushed uh, out of the situation? Yeah, that, that, that's the reality. That Tigray is being pushed off the federation. Uh, so for those who want the continuity of the existing federation, not only for the people of Tigray, they need to understand the situation. Every political elite living in Ethiopia and outside. If you want Tigray, just fight and oppose anything that's made against Tigray. It's not only the territory that you have to think about. You have to also think about the people. And of course, the Ethiopian politics had been a politics of territory. You just the regimes had been following the territory of the people. That's not the right, the, 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 the right way. You have to follow the people. You have to have the people. If you have the people, you will have, you definitely have the territory they inhabit. So this expansion is thinking is not good. Tigray is being pushed away. And of course, let alone such pressure is, is in place. Tigray as a people do have an unconditional right to self-determination up to cessation. There is an exit door, Article 39. But it's good. If, if at least this exit becomes uh, peaceful without any bloodshed, because the very purpose of Article 39 is avoiding blood, bloodshed. And of course, for the purpose of the political uh, advantage, the elites are just uh, denying uh, the reality. They just want to give a deaf ear to what is happening against the people of Tigray. And of course, it's not only Tigray that pays the cost. It's all the Ethiopian society. Because there is no winner in war. And if that happens, I don't know what will happen. But to, sh to be sure, it's not only Tigray that will be uh, at stake. OK. So how do you check in the balance uh, is now being implemented in Ethiopia. There is no check in balance at this time. The institutions, which were, of course, previously they were not strong enough, but now the, the institutions, the judiciary, particularly the Council of Constitutional Inquiry, the House of People's Representative, the House of Federation, the House of Federation means an organ that is established to serve as a guardian, a custodian of the supremes of the Constitution. The electoral board. Any, any institution became a subservient of the prime minister. So the prime minister is using this institutions to legitimize his unconstitutional decisions and laws. So to say there is a check and balance, you need to have an independent judiciary. You need to have a house of federation, the constitutional umpiring or interpreting organ that serves as what, as, uh, as a constraint on the against excess use of power by the by the prime minister, but now not only they are, uh, they are, they are, they are, they 
they are not standing with the constitution, that they, they are rather helping the prime minister to further violate the constitution. Like uh, one instance is the inclusion of uh, an issue that is extending the regional government uh, and regional state legislative organs period without conducting an election is a proposal that's provided by the House of Federation, which uh, something that was not uh, uh, in the application of the House of People's Representative, but the House of Federation included it. Oh, Mr. Prime Minister, it's also good if you can extend uh, uh, the term of the regional governments as well as the regional legislative organ. It's that kind of thing uh, which is uh, done by the House of Federation. So nothing, there is no one that checks the prime minister. No institution, institutional check, no legal check, no individual check. Of course, the prime minister at least is like, uh, is, is like a king. Uh, at this present time. The only thing that's very difficult for, for him is Tigray. Outside of Tigray, he's just acting like a, a king. In all the rest and you cannot check a king. There is no check and balance in and, 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 uh, an imperial region. That's, so totally we cannot argue on that. There is no check and balance. Check and, and balance means that the government needs to be questioned for everything. For example, there, there was a meeting, yeah, uh, after the Tigray medias are blocked, Tigray medias are blocked, there was uh, a session of the House of People's Representative. And why the House of People's Representative failed to ask the Prime Minister regarding the closure of the, the medias? No one asks. You know, the House of People's Representative is the highest political organ of the federal government. He has the power to ask the prime minister from his position as well. But let alone to do or to make such big decision, members of the House of People's Representative doesn't have the caliber even to ask questions uh, to, to the prime minister. So there is no check in the balance. Uh, because check in the balance is a, a mechanism whereby the three organs of government will uh, uh, regulate themselves with a view of to counter an ambition from the other branch. Check in the balance means an ambition, uh, as Madison says, an ambition must have counter ambition. So when the executive comes with a certain ambition, the legislature, or the legislature need to ask it whether such ambition of the, excuse, the executive exceeds and violates a certain law or interest of citizens or the nation. And therefore, the, the House of People's Representative need to come with a counter amb ambition that serves as a constraint, as a limit to the ambition of the executive. The same is true, the, 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 the executive and the, the judiciary. Is true, yeah. yeah, the reverse is true. And the check and balance between the executive and the judiciary, and the same thing, but this is not uh, uh, something that we can talk about right today because, as I said earlier, check and balance is uh, all about uh, law. And this time it's very difficult. We are not in a situation to talk about uh, law. Law and order is just almost over in this, in this, in this federation. So, having taken all what you said so far into account, how do you describe the legitimacy of uh, Prime Minister's leader? I mean, Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed's leadership. Yeah, Prime Minister Dr. Abiy Ahmed has lost a great opportunity mm. that he, he got uh, when he came to power. Mm -hmm. There was huge support, more than any in Tigray, mm -hmm. to the Prime Minister. Uh, with such support from the people. It's unfortunate that the prime minister turned to be uh, a prime minister with a highly deteriorating legitimacy at this level, at, at this time. You know, and one of the reasons is, if, if, if you want to be legitimate, you need to manage legitimacy and populism are quite different. 
in the fact that every that the majority are shouting the new support doesn't does not mean you are you are legitimate enough legitimacy is very very uh, need to be taken in a very qualified manner <laughs> if you remember immediately after his appointment as a prime minister of Ethiopia there was support for the prime minister both in Addis and uh, across different regional states but the support popular supports through time tended to be a mob movement mm -hmm. you know mob mentality emerged mm -hmm. and this mob mentality results in a, a certain state of mind like targeting a certain individual particular tigrians as anti reform uh, groups and of course so many things, things life property displacement uh, so, so many things happen against tigray losing life uh, destruction of property and displacement the prime minister was silent when the federal highway uh, crossing From Addis to, uh, to, to, Addis Tigray. to Tigray is closed. The Prime Minister is silent. His silence is, of, of course, uh, because if, he's, if he speaks the right thing, he will lose the mob. You know? Mm -hmm. That's what he fears. That's so, so you mean they were, uh, I mean, all this were being done in his best interest? Not necessarily in his best interest, mm. but he was silent. He is a commander in chief. Ordering the federal security, regulating the federal highways. So it was the public knowledge that the, 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 highway, the highway from Addis to Magala is closed for about a year. The prime minister was silent. He was silent when Tigrians were killed. And Amhara regional state particularly. When 70,000, around 70,000 Tigrians are displaced from Gonda and other, he was just silent. When the Ethiopian flag is violated, in Amhara is particularly. So he like, maybe he was afraid of turning the support into an opposition that he, he, cho he chose to be, to, to, to be silent of, uh, of what is happening in the country. But a mob is a mob, you know? Uh, Aristotle's was against democracy, uh, democracy, I mean democracy in a sense majority thinking. He said a democracy, if not properly restrained, is a role of the mob and the demagogue. Mm -hmm. So democracy will engulf democracy itself. So you need to be very much careful how the support is going on. You know what, what's happened later? All the supporters are now what? Mm -hmm. huh? mm -hmm. A group of certain dissent, political dissent, or a resistant group, because the prime minister failed to properly manage his support, failed to use such huge support into a fruitful reform. He just in, in, instead insists to appear as a pilot, uh, as having a pathological disease of hating a certain political group, and. He's paying the cost for that. Mm -hmm. He's paying the cost for that. So the issue of legitimacy, you know, we can we can see that from the highest support to almost no Very support, nice. yeah. almost no support. Everyone, uh, we we do have friends. We discuss uh, friends living in other uh, regional states in Addis. We, so the discussion we have now and we, we have had a year before Are quite. Is quite they are quite different, so everyone is not happy. It's, the fact that doesn't appear bef uh, uh, went out through demonstration does not mean that the people is happy with, of the prime minister. And it's pretty clear that everyone in the Ethiopian Federation is uh, frustrated by the situation. Uh, and what makes this very amazing is all these uh, anti-peace speeches by the prime minister Please, you, you remember last time uh, this, his speech he said in his press release following the PLF and other groups' opposition on the extension of the election, he said that 
if you do that, homes will be destroyed. Mothers will cry. Yeah, the youth will die. This kind of speech, kind of anti-peace speech, are made by the Nobel Peace Prize winner. Of course. So, do you mean the uh, Nobel Peace Prize was given to Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed mistakenly? Uh, it's very difficult to, 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 to make judgment on that, whether it's, it's a mistake or deliberate. Or deliberate. Mm. It's very difficult, but uh, from the very beginning it was controversial. Even uh, the Nobel Peace Prize Committee, while delivering this, uh, the, the, the award to the Prime Minister, mm. made that this, reward, uh, this award is give, uh, given to the Prime Minister of Ethiopia, uh, not because has done uh, accomplished everything, but uh, on the promises he showed, particularly to the, uh, to the each Eritrean rapprochement. Uh, even the committee recognizes the high level internal displacement in Ethiopia. And he, uh, that committee emphasized on the need to transform the Ethiopian state into, a, into democracy, uh, conducting free and fair election, and so on. Uh, so it was clearly stated that it's a, ki a kind of promise that will do that, 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 that uh, you know, that uh, help us or, or, or pushes the prime minister towards forward, forward to, yeah. to, to, to do better. Yeah, so mm. the reward was not given for something already done, but for, for something to be done. That's, uh, but, but, but don't forget uh, uh, the uh, Nobel Peace Prize Committee has mentioned the initiative Times Abiy has, has taken uh, with regard to the Ethiopia Ethiopia border conflict. Yes. Yeah. So, where, where is it? Where is that rapprochement? The border is open for two months and it's closed. It's still closed. Mm -hmm. where, where is it? the agreement? Mm -hmm. What the agreement says? Where is the peace? There is no peace. So there is no peace both regarding the Eritrean. Uh, issue, there is no peace internally as well. So the peace prize is given for why there is no peace. So mm -hmm. uh, it does not seem a prize. It, that award seems to be rather a prize for something we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, what are the possible uh, scenarios uh, if uh, the status quo uh, continues as it is? Yes. Yeah, as I said repeatedly, the, the, everything that you can talk about slow, even politics is almost closed. We are in a certain state that we don't know as citizens. So what will happen? I cannot speculate right now. Yeah, you can, as, as, as an academician, I can speculate based on what happened previously, what's happening now, and what May, may happen in the future. But now, everything is closed. There is no opportunity for any possible uh, reconciliation, a political dialogue and discussion or compromise. Uh, everything, the tempo is very high now on both sides, you know, especially uh, between Tigray and of course the federal government uh, uh, and the party that's looting the federal government, the, the, the legally contested party that's prosper party. And I don't see any possibility uh, of reconciliation and political compromise or dialogue between these two forces. But are you saying that other Ethiopian nations nationalities are uh, comfortable with uh, Abiy Ahmed's position? No, leadership? no, they, they, mm -hmm. they cannot be uh, comfortable with the existing regime, but they, they are just silenced. They, they, they don't have the means. Silenced by? By the region. Mm. They are silenced by the region. So everyone who appears to stand against the existing region is being arrested and killed. And therefore, everyone is uh, you know, uh, frustrated. Um, and there is no room uh, uh, to express your own opinion. Uh, for example, for me, it's very difficult it's, uh, to, to, as, tigre, as one t individual Tigrayan, uh, I cannot go to Addis, for example. It's very difficult for me to go to Addis, and it's more than a year since I just went to Addis. What are you afraid of? 
Why not? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Hmm. On this particular time that we are, you don't know who will kill you. Hmm. You don't know. There is no rule of law. The minimum thing that a government in power can do or shall do is to ensure peace and order, hmm. to ensure that citizens can live everywhere they wish to live within the federation. Mm. And this is clearly provided in the constitution. But mm. that's not happening. So no one, no one is daring to just live outside his own regional state because there is no you know, uh, guarantee uh, that you are safe physically, in terms of property, in terms of life. No one is safe now. Thank you very much indeed for being the guest of this program. Before. That's okay. Thank you very much indeed. My pleasure.